Hi, and welcome to this third installment in the tutorial series for using SketchUp to design dollar store foam board airframes. Uh, we're going to start out here and talk about transformations, which are things like movement, rotation, scaling, as well as grouping, and then working with something called components, which is something, as we get into it, you'll see is very powerful and will save you a lot of time. Uh, first off, I'm looking here at my default scene. I'm going to select our default person and delete them. And to first demonstrate move, I'm going to take my rectangle tool here and draw a rectangle out and hit P to switch to my push-pull tool to kind of pull up some of that geometry into three dimensions. And I'm going to hit space on the keyboard to switch myself back to my select tool. And as remember in the previous lesson, we learned about faces and edges and how you can select multiple by holding down shift. Well, you can also select multiple things by multiplying or clicking multiple times. So if I click on a face once, I've only selected the face. If I click twice in rapid succession, then I've selected the face as well as all the edges that make up that face. If I click three times in rapid succession, it will basically select the entire object that, and any things that are attached to it. So for instance, if there's another object off to the side, it will only select those objects that make up, that are sort of touch or, you know, contiguous. So let me get rid of this one with delete. And it can be kind of tedious to have to keep multiple, multiple click clicking and selecting, you know, oh, i got to select the whole thing and so forth. Well, there is something that's very simple, makes it really easy to kind of work with multiple entities at once, and it's called grouping. So I'm going to click three times to select the entire object, and then I'm going to right-click and choose Make Group. Once you've done that, clicking once anywhere on the object selects the entire object. Also, anything that you do to the object is going to happen to the entire object. So, as we're going to move it, it's going to move the entire queue around. So, to move it, first I select it. I'm going to select my Move tool here. And then you'll notice that we get different snapping indicators depending on where we're kind of hovering the mouse over and once I click and drag I will start moving. And you'll notice that it does snap to the different axes so here it's going up on the blue axis or down and it's going to go either back on the green axis or forward and then once you release it you've then moved it to that location. And I just noticed that I'm in my perspective view, I'm going to switch back over to parallel projection or isometric view. So again, to move, you basically just hit M on the keyboard or come up here to the move tool, select your object, and when you click and start to drag, you're going to be moving it somewhere. And depending on where you release it, that's where you've left it. Now, let's say that we wanted to move only an edge and not this entire thing. Well, I can right click over this and instead of ungroup, they call it explode. So if you hit that, then basically it drops it out of the group. And now I'm back with faces and individual lines. Because you can move an entire face in any of the dimensions that we were talking about. And you can even move just an individual line. So if I switch to move, I can slide this edge back that way. Maybe I want to bring this edge down. I can hit M on the keyboard again to move. And so you can use this to move edges and thereby change your geometry. I can move this entire face inward to make it thinner. So move is more than just kind of moving the entire object. You can manipulate and shape things by moving parts of them around. All right, so I'm going to triple click to select it again and go make group. And you can see that it is grouped because it gets a bounding box around the entire object, not just highlighting the lines. And you notice that also the faces don't get the little kind of dot selection indicator on them. So that's basically the move tool. And we'll do more interesting and, and in-depth things with it, but that's the basics of it. Next, we've got rotation. And with rotation, you get this protractor that kind of follows your mouse around. And you'll notice that right now it's blue and it looks like it's laying flat. As you move it around, it changes color to orient to the different axes, and if I get to one of these other ones, there's a, on the green axis. 
And the easiest way to think about the move tool is to think of it as kind of a lever. And wherever you first click, that's going to be your pivot point. And that's what everything is going to rotate around. So if I want to rotate around this point, I can click, and then I get this inference line that comes out. And this is basically saying this is where I want to start my rotation from. So once I click a second time, I'm now rotating. And you can see the angle that you're rotating down here in the lower right indicator or status bar area. So it's saying angle, if I come back to zero again, here it's 10, 15 degrees. And you can go all the way around to 180 degrees. And then once I click again, I'll have completed that rotation transformation. Uh, let's say I wanted to lay it flat on the ground plane. I can find a point and snap there. And when I click again, this is my second click. I basically said I'm going to rotate from this point 90 degrees. And now I've rotated it laying flat. Tapping space on the keyboard to deselect or to switch back to my selection tool. And again, you can also ro rotate individual parts of it. So if I explode this group and take this edge, I can... Let's say I'll rotate around this point, and I'll grab it from over here and swing it up. You can see how that's drastically changed the geometry of that shape. Or if I select this edge, and I hit R on the key, or, um, uh, switch over to the Rotate tool. Let's say I'm going to rotate from that point and swing this out. And what's happening here that SketchUp is trying to maintain this as a solid piece of geometry, so it kind of throws in little creases here and there. We won't have that happen too often with the way that we're going to be modeling, but just be aware that if you start kind of twisting and folding things up, it will change the geometry, and you may have to backtrack with, you know, getting multiple undos here. So I just did a Control or Command Z to undo a few times and switch it back up. So that's the basics of rotation. The first click you kind of pick the point that you're going to be rotating around. Uh, your second click, you're going to kind of define your starting point of your rotation. And then your third click completes the rotation. All right. Now, what about scaling? Let's say this is the shape we want, but we've realized it's too small. Well, once you have it selected, you have the scale tool up here. If you click that, you can see you get these handles all the way around your object. And depending on which handle you grab, it's going to change the way or the direction that you're scaling. So if I just wanted to t take this object and make it thicker out both sides, I can grab either this handle or its corresponding one on the other side. When you do that, it'll drag and scale everything out on that axis. If I wanted to just make it taller, I could either grab here and pull up, or to make it shorter, push down. Or you can also grab individual side edges. Now if you want to scale the whole thing up and down, you can grab from the corners, and that keeps the proportions in check as you go. So it just proportionally scales things up and down. And as you can see, that can really change your geometry. And one of the really interesting things is that you can use scale to create very complex and, and interesting shapes. So for instance, if I draw a rectangle, let's say, and I hit P on the keyboard to use the push-pull tool, and I'm going to use my draw line here, and pull that out, uh, let's see here, and I'm going to draw a line from here to there, I'm going to rotate around the other side, divide that like that. Now, let's see what happens if I select just this edge, and I scale that edge. Oops, let me get in here. Da -da. Or actually, I'm going to have to scale this, these two surfaces. So if I select these and scale them, you can see it's really morphing and changing my geometry around, and it automatically kind of put in this crease. Or let's say that I wanted to change the back face here. I can scale just this face 
and pull it up or slide it down. So scale can be used on individual parts of an object as well as an entire object. All right. Now, what if, let's say that I make a very simple um, rounded wing here. I'm just going to draw this out. And I'm going to introduce this tool up here, which is the arc tool. And the arc tool basically allows you to just draw a well-defined partial circle or arc. So if I click with the arc tool here, let me draw that out again. Take my arc tool and define a place I'm going to start, which in this case I'm going to choose this end point. And I'm going to choose a, another point, in this case out here at this end point. Once I start pulling out, you can see it will create an arc between those two points. So, and also in this case, you notice it snapped and even says half circle. So I know for a fact that that is exactly a half circle, as opposed to if it's down here, it's not a half circle. So I'm going to go ahead and let that snap to a half circle. We hit space on the keyboard to deselect, and I'm just going to get rid of that little edge. And I'm going to use my push-pull tool to give it a little bit of depth, just to give myself an interesting object. Let's say this is a wing section for, a, I don't know, gingerbread plane is what it looks like. But um, let's say I want to use two of these wings. Well, rather than just copying and pasting or duplicating in, in other ways, we're going to first go down here. And instead of making it a group, if I right-click, you can choose to make something a component. And a component is basically a reusable part. And it's powerful because they, they kind of all stay linked together. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I make this a component, and I'll call this wing, uh, one of the nice things about it is you can name components. You can even put it in a description and everything. There's other options in here, but we're not going to really mess with those too much. And I'm going to hit Create. So now it behaves basically like a grouped object. But if I duplicate it, and I'm going to duplicate it while moving it. And to do that, if I hold down on the Mac, it's Alt Option. And I believe on the PC, it's Alt, uh, Alt Key. So if I hold down Alt while I drag, that duplicates it while it moves. Now the thing that makes this interesting, let me swing this around. I'm going to use my Rotate and rotate it around there and move it back here. And you'll notice that Move is going to snap, so I'm going to snap it right to that point. So even though these are two separate components, they're linked to each other. So if I make a change on one, it's going to change both of them. So for instance, if I change the thickness of one, and I'm going to do that by double clicking, and you'll notice that everything else except for this component has gotten kind of grayed out. We're basically inside this group or this component at this point. If I double click on empty space again, we're now outside of that component. So double clicking on a component will drop you into what's called edit component mode, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to edit this component. And I'm going to make a change by pushing down and thinning that wing out a little bit. And you'll notice the other half, our copy of it, did as well. Now let's say that we added a aileron panel or part right there. Notice it automatically got added to the other one. And since I had rotated it, it's on the opposite side there. So any change that you make while editing a component is duplicated to all the other copies of that component. And then when I go and click back out, now I've got changes to my wing, which in this case would not fly very well, but you get the idea. So components are powerful because they're kind of like smart groups. You can work out a part, like for instance, I have a component that I have saved in a file that's a, a power pod, a, a, a flight test swappable power pod, and it's a component. And because I made it a component, in one of the planes I was designing, it had two engines with two pods. And I noticed I had one little part that wasn't quite right. Well, I just changed it on one of that, one of those pods, and they all got changed. So components are very, very powerful. Uh, so that's really what I want to cover in this one. I want to try to keep these kind of short and concise. Um, the next one, we're going to start getting into working with reference material and how to kind of bring plans 
for airplanes into SketchUp and start to kind of build some geometry. So we've pretty much gotten the basics out of the way, uh, most of the techniques that we're going to use going forward. We're just going to kind of refine them and get a little kind of more finesse with them as we go along. Uh, so, again, thanks for watching.